Do you want to bust your sales quota? Do you want to join the ranks of top 1% sellers? The Top 1% Sellers Podcast gives you the insights and the tools to help you achieve your sales greatness. The podcast features sales and services professionals, leaders, and experts to give you the edge you're looking for. Here's your host, Ash Sadiq. I'll just start our, our third segment, which, which I think is, is, is uh, sort of the really big focus for our audience, specifically professionals, people, people working in sales, because I know you always talk about everybody that touches the customer. Um, how do sales professionals in this environment, in your mind, really um, plan to win big in a big way, you know, whether it's you know, the opportunity size or the long-term relationship with the customer? Yeah, so when it comes to sellers, uh, you know, if for anybody who has followed me for some time, I say this all the time, I call myself a recovering seller because uh, I, while I no longer carry a quota, um, I, you know, I'm, I feel like I vicariously get to sell through a fantastic sales organization here. Um, and then I also get to vicariously sell through our customers right? and through their sales organizations as we help them be more uh, successful in their own selling efforts. Uh, but I would say this, I'd say behavior of a sales rep is one thing they can control, right? Making sure you're prepared when you show up for a customer using the technology that's actually at your fingertips and not uh, pushing back. For those of us who have been selling for a long time and you know we've kind of come and go through, gone through having Rolodexes and Excel spreadsheets and then moving to a single version of ACT and then you know kind of graduating to something bigger from a CRM perspective and, and maybe having the, the fortune you know of landing in Salesforce you know yes. when, when Salesforce showed up. So I, I would say that we've been going through a lot of this and, and what has happened is we have a little bit of fatigue around all that has come at us as sellers. Is it solution selling, spin selling, challenger selling? Is it you know this CRM tool, this marketing tool, this social selling tool? This you know what is it? And so we have a lot of fatigue around technology. So I'd say that you know I, I believe that the this competition between salespeople going forward is going to be those sellers that are actually using intelligence and using the technology the yeah. way it was really meant to be used are going to have a great advantage over those that sort of still push back um, and, and kind of put their head in the sand around, I don't want to use technology. Uh, they're just going to get beat out of the sheer intelligence that's coming out of the systems that's allowing sellers to be much more engaging with customers. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and to that point, actually, I have a question here from, from the audience. Um, talking about, do you see them, the sellers making any big mistakes during this time, given the shift from, you know, selling, you know, physical products to selling now what amounts to be a subscription service? Yeah, so I'd say this, I'd say when you, when you start talking about that kind of a shift, I believe we no longer are selling technology, I believe we're selling change. And when you sell change, right, it's really difficult. I mean, think about us in our human lives, right? Okay, New Year's just passed. How many of you are still doing your New Year's resolution, yeah. right? I mean, change is hard. And, and sometimes you, know, you can read many different people that say it takes four weeks, it takes 60 days, it takes 90 days for change. I mean, you got to be committed to the change, committed to going to the gym, committed to stopping smoking, eating better, whatever it might be. And sales is the same way, right? And so when you're out selling to the customer, it isn't that you go in and you have to explain to them the difference and the value between using an on-premise on um, versus using cloud. You now have to start to really understand the business problem. So as a seller, getting much more uh, educated around a particular vertical or industry so you understand the business pains and challenges you know kind of all up yes so when you're having conversations with customers it isn't about knowing them individually really well it's about understanding more broadly sort of what's going on in their in their entire sector uh, and then remember, you're always walking in selling change. And you could be selling it to the you know, database administrator of the on-premise version, which they're not going, yeah, come on in, come sell me, come sell me SaaS, right? Or you're selling software-defined networks and it's the, you know, it's the Cisco CCIE you're trying to sell it to. I mean, at the end of the day, you really have to think about the audience you're selling to and interruptive to their job. You have to figure out what's the best way for me to get them to engage and understand the value. Absolutely. Uh, the follow-up question, I think, is probably coming from someone who is actually who hires a sales professional, basically saying, does the profile for a successful sales professional in this environment change? And if it does, how? 
Yeah, I think that now it is, you know, and I don't think this is something new. I mean, I think we've moved from speeds and feeds to more sort of solution selling. Um, but I would say now it is much more about that kind of relationship that you have with the buyer because number one, the buyer is changing. Not only is the role changing potentially, you know, it used to be we always sold to IT. Now we may be selling to the head of marketing or the head of sales or the head of customer service and the buyer is changing. But the dynamic of that buyer is also changing. It's no longer selling to an individual buyer. It tends to be selling to a team of buyers, which means now you have to think about how do I deal storm and come in with the pre-sales engineer, you know, technical architect, someone from security, someone from a particular vertical and you show up. Yes. Now that sounds great if you're in a big sales organization. If you're in a startup and you're in a small sales organization, then you really have to think about how do I as a single seller bring the most value without over committing when I'm selling to potentially a room of four or five buyers, right? That all have an opinion. And we can't know everything. I mean, I think that we have to, as salespeople, give ourselves a break, that we're just not going to be able to walk in there and know everything. But we have to be aware that the relationship that we build during these sales cycles and the sales process is different. It makes, makes a lot of sense. And I think, you know, again, I, I love the fact that you always sort of look at the trends. With, with what you said in mind, when you look down, you know, a year, two years out, how do you see that sales professional's profile changing even more? Uh, so I would say that it, it will become this unusual dynamic between automation and intelligence and a human seller. And, and it could be three or five years out. So let's just think about things selling to things. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Who's the salesperson in that? Yes, that's, that's right, a what's, environment, yeah. Right. What's the commission check? Who, who does the pipeline reviews <laughs> when you have things selling to things and you have 30% of all customer service calls coming from things, which then need to be followed up around customer success and customer experience. So I think, you know, when you look out a couple of years, as more and more of this technology starts to make itself in the business, humans have to be understanding of some of that, those commoditized transactions and maybe even some higher dollar transactions are going to happen in different ways. Yes. So we can't fight it. We have to figure out how do I uh, how do I use the technology to augment what I do? How do I use it to support what I do? How do I respond in a way um, that is still timely and, and puts in that human element to the to the exchange? Uh, but I would say I almost want to I almost want to back up and go. I'm not sure if we need to be worrying about how we need to change two or three years from now because I feel like we still haven't finished changing yes. from the last five years, right? I mean, I think we still aren't using technology fully. I think people are still learning how to social sell. I think the marketing department, as it gets more digitized, um, has to get closer to sales, and that's not perfect. And then customer service is now in entering the picture. So the combination of those three things. I think we got a lot of things to shore up before we start worrying about you know, where we think it's going to be in the future. So I'd say you know, continue to get better at what we should be doing today, and yeah. then keeping in mind the fact that technology is going to push us even further uh, down this path of automation and intelligence. Absolutely. I have, I have a question here. Uh, it says, do you see the role of SDRs waning as customer relationships become more critical? Uh, I would say I think segmenting the customers actually increases. Uh, knowing more about who are your most profitable customers, who have the longest lifetime value, right? What are the kinds of customers you should be going after? Then you say, how do I organize an inbound and outbound selling organization? It could be two people, could be a hundred people. I mean, it all depends, right? When I say organization, I just mean people. Yes. Right? Organizing them around, you know, uh, sales development reps that then pass over to a salesperson? Is it account-based marketing that gets much more segmented and then hands it to a sales development rep? who may take it all the way. I mean, there may be a point in time where that handoff becomes uh, even less uh, important because SDRs are getting much more intelligent using the customer 360. So I think segmentation will increase the role that satisfies that, whether it's account-based marketing, an inbound rep, an outbound rep, uh, you know, whether it's uh, you know, marketing picking this up, whether it's customer success managers, whatever the role may be, I think it goes back to what I said earlier, Try to get out of the lens of the inside view of, will I still have a job as an SDR? Or do I say, look, I always want to make sure I'm adding value regardless of where I sit in the organization. Yes. If I'm constantly upselling and cross-selling and I have higher average sale price and I have my customers churn less, I'm doing a better job. I know I'm always going to be in need, right? So regardless of what you call yourself, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's very interesting because I was actually on the, on, the, on the receiving end of a conversation with a customer success rep, and I actually saw how he started to talk about you know, we could do this, and all of a sudden it was basically actually a sales conversation. Uh, where Correct. You're thinking, here's how we can save you money, here's how we can protect your, your digital assets. And uh, it was very interesting that that started to happen in that customer success conversation. I, I did not go into that conversation thinking there is a sales piece to it. But to your point, that evolved into that sort of dual purpose conversation that took place. Um, yeah, there was actually there was actually a prediction that came out uh, from Gartner that, and I forget the percentage, but forgive me for forgetting the percentage, um, <laughs> but it was some large percent of, and I want to say it was in the 20, 25% range where uh, that percentage of customer service representatives were going to be providing quotes out of the CRM system or actually, uh, you know, upselling and cross-selling uh, out of the CRM system. So going back to what you just said, you know, I think um, I don't want to minimize the fact that the roles are important. So if you're an executive sales manager and you're running a sales team and you're trying to think about how should I be organized, yeah. it's important that you have those distinct roles so you make sure people are very focused in what they do versus everybody does everything, which I don't agree with. Uh, what's going to end up happening, though, is there is going to be this blurring between the lines between someone who plays the role now as customer success or an SDR or a sales rep. Now, all of a sudden, they're doing all three at some point in, in the buying journey. Absolutely, which, which creates a lot of implications for compensation and so on. Um, I'd love for us to use the, the, the next few minutes because we're getting close to wrapping up. And um, I'd love for us to speak to sales leadership that are putting together a sales enablement program that would produce essentially a sales rep that would succeed in an excess service world. Um, you know, given the fact that, again, you're dealing with a lot of legacy sellers and given the picture that you described from the beginning of the conversation, how do they then looking ahead, really develop a, a program that will help them transform those sellers into sellers that would succeed in this new world? It's a great question because I'd say this, you know, we talk a lot about sales development reps. We talk about a lot about the sales rep of the future. And I think what gets ignored a lot is actually the sales management layer. Yeah. You know, we have to invest in the sales managers because they're really the mentors and coaches of the next generation of really successful sales force, right? They're the ones that are making decisions on who to hire. They're doing the interviewing. Are they hiring the right people? Yeah. Um, are they hiring the right people because they understand what they need in the future? Are they hiring the people they've always hired? So I think the sales management layer is one that gets often forgotten because they're the ones that actually do the pipeline reviews. They're the ones that get their teams excited about using the new technology. Um, so I would say that, you know, as a, as a sales manager or as a company, invest in your sales managers and training them on how to be good coaches and good mentors and how to have them be able to use the technology so that they can work with people in an individual fashion. Not everyone is the same kind of seller. Not everyone will be good at social selling or cold calling. Um, but they may be really good at sending off an email or really good at trade shows. And so, you know, we want to make for sure you amplify where people are really good and successful and, and then you mentor them on areas that they want to improve. But everyone wants to do it at a different pace and they learn in a different way. And the only way we can really build um, collectively a successful sales organization is if you have really strong sales management. And I mean at the lead level, right, a sales lead. And then, you know, a first-time sales manager. I'm not talking about the vice president of sales, right? Uh, I'm talking about those that are really touching the field or the inside yeah. sellers on a daily basis, right? listening into calls and helping them with emails. Like that coaching can make or break you, right? So I'd say it's really important. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, when you think about, again, you know, maybe just some parting thoughts for sellers today in terms of how can they set themselves up for success, um, you know, given the fact that they are managing everything that's behind them, all the teams that are supporting them, and those customer conversations, you know, what are your, you know, top, top piece of advice to them? Yeah, I'd say that, you know, I think as an individual, we have to become very, especially as a seller, we have to become very self-aware of what we're good at and maybe what we're not so good at. And you have to have that conversation with yourself. And so the things that you're good at, it's like, how do you lead with that? How do you amplify that? How do you make sure that that's always shining through? The things you're not so good at, I don't need you to become really great at. 
I just need you to become slightly better at. And so if you know you're not good at presentations, take a presentation class. Like go take an acting class, go take a drama class, go take a speech class, go take something that's going to make you really uncomfortable by giving a presentation so you can get better. You know, if it's you're not very good at writing an email, a compelling email, right? Yeah. Ask your, your sales manager to help you or, you know, get up on YouTube or take a class or take a writing class or just write every day so that you get better or read people who right. you like. And so you can learn. So I think it's a combination of, you know, you you have to invest in yourself or no one else will. And so what are those things that you can invest in? But I don't need you to be, you know, just top notch in everything. I just need you to be top notch in the things that are important, um, that are authentic to you. And that's where you really want to amplify yourself. Absolutely. And, and then in terms of in terms of kind of keeping up with the trends, because a lot of the time the customers want the seller to kind of share with them what the vision is into the future, right? Um, do you specifically have specific perhaps books or sources where you keep up to date with what's coming down the line in terms of where we're going with the customer journey? Yes, so I tell you this, I, I, I am definitely a student of the profession, right? I mean, I spend a lot of time consuming and, and it's not one source. You know, I read a lot. I read a lot of books. Um, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, and it's not that it's just, you know, it's the same for all the time. You know, I, I will watch my Twitter feed and I see something, oh, I don't know this. And I, you know, dig into it or I hear someone say something in a meeting and I don't know something about it and I write it down and then I go learn about it. So it's just a constant. I probably spend a couple of hours a day every day um, sort of digging around and making sure I know what people are saying and what's going on. Now, as a sales, because I don't carry a quota, but if you carry a quota, right, you don't have that kind of time to invest. Uh, you have to find a rhythm that works for you. Is it 15 minutes every day? Is it, you know, on the weekends when you're on, you know, on the treadmill or you're at the gym, you're listening to a podcast? Is it while you're driving to work, you're listening to a book, whatever yes. it might be? You have to make it fit into your schedule, but um, go. Absolutely, and I think that's a fantastic segue to close on, Tiffany. Uh, it's been a really a pleasure to have you. I know how busy your schedule is, and I'm glad that uh, we were able to have you here with us. I want to share with everyone listening in, as well as people who will be watching this on YouTube and, and all the other social media channels, uh, this conversation, as well as other conversations, we're going to be publishing them on iTunes as part of the Top 1% Sellers Podcast. And also, we are actually going to be on the C-Suite Radio, which is a, uh, a part of the uh, C-Suite Network organization. And uh, this show would be in front of a lot of executives around the country and also a lot of sellers and people who are really trying to get better at what they do and really join the Top 1% Sellers. Tiffany, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'll it's been great seeing you. This with you as well. Thank you for your time. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Top 1% Sellers Podcast. Give us your suggestions and guest recommendations by emailing us at ash at connectwithash.com. Thank you also for sharing this podcast with your colleagues and social media contacts. To connect with us on LinkedIn, please send a connect request to ash at connectwithash.com. See you at our next episode. Thanks for tuning in.